So I wanted to comment on the future of Linux and how it's changed a lot in the past few years. Notably, the major players as far as distros go. There's been some notable developments lately for both the server and desktop markets. And so we're going to take a look at what's happening and why it's happening. By the way, you're watching DS Tech Media. I'm Jay. I cover everything tech, but I focus on Linux and open source. And you know the deal. This is the part where I ask you to like, share, and subscribe. All that good stuff. In July... Everyone started talking about how Linux has reached over 3% of the desktop market share. And we've got articles everywhere. Uh, ZDNet, itsfoss.com, Ars Technica, and even the register. And get this, that's excluding the just over 4% that is Chrome OS, which is also Linux, but the wrong kind of Linux. Desktop Linux use measures... 3.08%, lagging about a quarter behind Chrome OS at 4.15%. And that's also discounting the massive amount of Android users. ARS Technica also notes Mac OS gaining more consistently from 24 to 34, and Windows dropped about that same amount. ZDNet's article mentions old school Linux desktops are still stuck at a lower number. If you take a broader view, however, Linux is the most popular end user operating system of them all. And here at StatCounter, global statistics is the data that all these articles are driven by. Up top here, we've got Windows, which by March was starting a pretty interesting decline. Uh, Mac OS X has an increase around that same time. Uh, this unknown is interesting because it also directly matches the loss in Windows market share. I'd be interested to know more about that. And then here we have Chrome OS and Linux. And it's interesting because in February, we're at 2.94, 2.85, by April it's 2.83, and by May it's 2.7, and then it starts to uptick. 3.7, 3.07, and 3.12. And one of the possible explanations for this uptick that I've seen is the success of Valve Steam Deck, which is a portable gaming console. It was released in the beginning of... February 2022 runs SteamOS and Arch-based distribution. From what I understand, the sales have been pretty good. Another possible explanation I've seen is newer releases of Windows 11 increasing hardware restrictions. Even upon its initial release, there was a lot of computers not able to run Windows 11 because of the trusted platform module. It is a hardware-based security feature not supported on older computers, and the restrictions are getting even more exclusive with upcoming releases. But yeah, apparently Linux usage is at an all-time high. The other big news is in the server and enterprise market. Red Hat has long held the crown of being the largest Linux company. Red Hat Enterprise Linux, or RHEL, is among the oldest major Linux distribution, though it's primarily used for servers and corporate enterprise environments. Red Hat's also been one of the largest contributors to the desktop Linux space. The Fedora project began in 2003. Fedora serves as the upstream and development release for RHEL's stable point releases, and it's sponsored by Red Hat. Red Hat's contributions to the Linux ecosystem include Systemd, Pulse Audio, KVM, and LibreOffice, just to name a few. RHEL has always been unique in that it requires licensing and support subscriptions. CentOS arose as a distribution of RHEL built from its source code, resulting in a free alternative minus branding and trademarks. And rather than battling CentOS, Red Hat sponsored the project, and eventually CentOS development was headed entirely 
by Red Hat employees. Eventually, the rights to the CentOS project became owned by Red Hat. And CentOS became the most deployed Linux for web servers and most environments that didn't require Red Hat's licensing. Back in 2019, IBM acquired Red Hat and everyone was pretty nervous about it. And their concerns were validated in 2020 when Red Hat announced that CentOS would be changing from its stable point release model that directly mirrored RHEL to CentOS Stream, a constantly updating rolling release model. And this meant that CentOS would no longer be reliable, stable, and suitable for production environments. However, Red Hat also stated that despite the changes, CentOS would still be focusing on stability, but the consensus of the wider Linux community is under IBM, Red Hat's taking away your free rock solid Linux distribution. As a response to these changes, two new distros, Rocky Linux and Alma Linux were created, basically picking up the work that CentOS had been doing. And in the time since the changes, the Rocky Linux source code repositories were the most traffic Linux source code repos online. However, once again, this year in 2023, Red Hat made another announcement that was overseeved that they would be now locking the source code itself behind a subscription, meaning the Rocky and Alma projects would now have to maintain a subscription to continue their work of building the stable and reliable fork of Red Hat Enterprise Linux, which both of them have promised that they will continue to do. And with this latest news from Red Hat and all the uncertainty around it, a lot of system admins have expressed a renewed interest in Debian as their go-to production distro. And I think that that is reflected in the numbers that we see on the distro watch page so now moving back to the pc or desktop linux space the only real metrics we have to go off of on popularity of the many distros is the page hit ranking on distro watch which isn't 100 percent reliable but it's basically the best thing we've got and as i record this the number one ranked Distro is MX Linux, which is Debian based. At no surprise, Linux Mint is in number two, and that is a Ubuntu based distro. Then we have Endeavor OS, which is an Arch based distro. The grandfather, Debian. Manjaro, another Arch based distro. Ubuntu, Pop OS, Fedora, OpenSUSE, and Linux Lite. Now, sev several years ago, when I was considering the forerunners in the future of Linux, my list would have been a little different than this. Mint would have certainly been there because it's an easy distro to recommend to new users. It's just loaded with everything you'd expect from a operating system. That's why I recommend it to people. KDE Neon, also based on Ubuntu, was very hot at the time, but it had a lot of hype because it was the KDE project's primary distro for development. Before that, it was kind of open SUSE where a lot of KDE work went on. Another distro that was super hot at the time was Elementary OS another Ubuntu based distro and it also happens to be a distro that I've done several videos on and I've personally used it on several of my laptops over the past few years. The most Mac OS like Linux distro, they have their own desktop based on GNOME but they had so much steam and so many developers choosing to develop with their platform that they were able to start their own app store called App Center. And at first, it seemed like a odd direction for them to go. Cats don't like closed doors. <laughs> what are you doing? Hola. But Elementary's App Center was really successful. There's a ton of third-party apps developed just for elementary and with the advent of Flatpak it was very easy for them to port it over to a lot of other distros especially with the widespread Flatpak support. Another distro that was really hot several years ago was Solus and the 
project was started by the head of open source for Intel, Ike Doherty. He basically created Solus from scratch. It wasn't based on Debian, Ubuntu, Red Hat. It was its own thing entirely with its own desktop called Budgie. And there was a lot of people saying it just works and it runs better and faster than everything else. But then Ike basically up and disappeared and didn't transfer SSH keys to the rest of the team. So development was totally stalled for a long time. And the project just kind of fell off since then. But they've, they've picked back up and they've had a successful release since then, but they just don't have anywhere near the mindshare that they once did. Around that same time, Pop! OS was brand new, and Pop! OS is developed as part of the System76 computers as their main OS that they ship out of the box. However, some developers from Pop! were also on the elementary team, I think. And as it stands, Pop! OS has a lot more popularity, I would say, than elementary. Uh, they're still at the number seven position. I'm not entirely sure why elementary fell off. I've heard that there were some disagreements between some of the primary developers, but just several years ago, the top distros on the list were primarily primarily ubuntu based distros and now the top list is debian itself a debian derivative two arch derivatives and then mint and of course ubuntu and pop os and i would say ubuntu's made a lot of positive movements in the past five years two other arch based distros that were really big at the time were antergos and Manjaro. And Manjaro is still in the number five position, but the Antigros project has been discontinued entirely. So if I were to make a new list of distros moving into the future, I would say MX Linux is now within the top three. Linux Mint remains in the top three, along with Pop! OS. Manjaro is up there as well. Endeavor OS and Manjaro are the two arch derivatives to watch. And I think Ubuntu will continue to remain very relevant into the future. Some other notable distros that I think are still relevant. KDE Neon and Elementary OS. They're both still in the top 20. Obviously Debian has a place somewhere parallel or above Rocky and Alma Linux with CentOS becoming far less relevant. I doubt any of the change-ups have really hurt Red Hat's bottom line. They're still the go-to. And Ubuntu commands a fairly strong development and production position as well. Probably nowhere near what CentOS was though. And so there you have it. My predictions for the future of Linux. What's your list look like? I'd be interested to know because I'm just going off of distro watch and my experience online. Leave your list in the comment. Tell me where you disagree. Tell me where you agree. Like, share, subscribe, all that jazz. It helps the channel grow and check back because I always have more videos in the pipeline. For DS Tech Media, I'm Jay and I'll see you in the next one.